Hello everyone, it's Steve Andrews here and uh, Saving Mother Ocean. But basically I'm looking at like saving the world, saving the planet, saving nature. And I, every show I'm going to be having like an activist as a friend, as a, as a guest, guest, uh, guest artist, guest, guest speaker, whatever you want to call it. And uh, today I'm very pleased to have with me Happy Reaping, who is actually a fellow singer-songwriter. So, Happy, um, it's over to you. Like, first of all, I'd, I'd like, uh, perhaps you could tell us all about, you know, what, what kind of motivated you? How did you get, like, uh, how, how did you come to start writing songs about saving the environment? And, and, and tell us about your music. Tell us about yourself. Um, so I'm an analyst and I'm quite um, analytical. So you've asked me three questions there. So I just like want to ask them in like the order, but I've already forgotten them. So I will I will talk about how I first started talking and um, writing what I call ecotronic music. So which is its own genre um because there is all, all nearly all the music we hear on the radio is about um human beings falling in love which is which is all nice which is all fine but there is so much more to the world and um there is so much other things that we love rather than you know our romantic partner so that is just really important to have that in the music industry in pop music and I, and I do actually want to change the music industry it's one of my um, big goals so that we have more songs that are about things other than you know falling in love with with a with a person um, and I when I first started writing music I can remember it, it, I was writing about myself and my experience and then at some point I, um, although it's kind of coming from me, it's not about my relationships with people anymore. Um, in my album called um, Every Atom is Sacred, I had a song called Rainforest and I had another one <clears throat> called You Are the Sea and I had one called um, Extinction. So on that album, I was already kind of traumatized by what's happening to our planet. And of course, putting it into a song and into music is one way of both getting it out of ourselves and getting other people to, to connect, to think there's, um, there's something uh, just to get people continuing to be motivated to make change um but my my big um my big focal point that made me understand that I was going to do this in different ways for my whole life was um finding the extinction symbol online and um I just thought well that's a that's a piece of art that's going to be part of um uh, human culture if you like forever and that's a symbol but then it'd be great to have other forms of art and songs and um all the other things that that people are doing in the world to um to express and raise awareness and to create art um about well, so, well, there's so many things that we've talked about a lot online, Steve, over the years now. Um, there are so many issues. You, I will never run out of things to, to write about. Now I know what my purpose is in music. I, I completely understand. I, you, there are so many things, so many issues. And um, it all needs it all needs action. You know, we need, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, the, the sooner more people can take action, the better. And that's why I'm inviting activists like yourself onto here to to talk about, you know, whatever, basically. And it is whatever, because there's so many things. Yeah. Um, well, uh, th thank you for explaining. And, and 
Um, you, you mentioned extinction, and I know that you actually sing about extinction. So extinction is a massive subject and something I'm very concerned about. And, yeah. Um, like, do you, I mean, do you have any ideas about like how we can get more people kind of active? Um, apart from like, because I'm singing songs and you're singing songs, but how do we yeah. actually reach the people what do you think we need um well i think we need um people to believe so there's this this is this is a big question but there's there's different forms of belief and um one of the the, the forms of be, the word belief that we hear about is people project their belief of how the world is onto the world. So my next album's called The Nature of Reality, where it's just so important to understand that there is a fundamental reality. Some people don't think there is a fundamental reality or don't seem to understand it. And within that fundamental reality, we can see that there is species loss through data. And there are even some crazy people who are so skeptical that they don't believe the data and my word for them is misinformation extremists in that they don't seem to believe anything um they believe all the misinformation so so that's one thing but belief in yourself and what you can achieve mm. is is not uh, developed enough in any of us and there's a dynamic in our society where activists are treated as if they're the, the the bottom of the pile right so my and this is something i'm going to be going into because i've got lots of plans for in a way my own self-development um because we all feel i feel like activists feel a bit stuck and trapped and we're we're stuck in a in a situation where <sighs> it feels like we haven't actually defined in a way what we're trying to achieve that that's one of the things because we haven't created a shared vision of of the future um but um stepping back from that um so it's important to have the the belief because we've got people who are in a way controlling maybe deliberately maybe not the way the world is We've got a whole bunch of people who are feel powerless to change the system. Some of them don't recognise the system. Some of them feel happy in the system. Some of them feel that it's a great system. <laughs> and then we've got activists who I who just think there are so many things wrong with our system. Parts of it are great, kind of, but there's it comes at a price and a cost. But there, there are so many things wrong that we we don't know where to start. We have overwhelm. We have information overload. We we um, don't necessarily look look out for ourselves. And so the number one thing for activists is um, self care. Um, we and, and then and then the dynamic in society is when activists want to to change something. And I don't know if you've noticed this um, from media, or whatever. Whatever activists try to change, they're, they're, they are they are um, <clears throat> vilified for trying to make the change in the wrong way. We're either too um, it's the wrong target, or it's the wrong time, or it's inconvenient, and we should use you should use we hear that phrase use the proper channels. So we are, are also ourselves stuck in this. Um, our own belief system where we've said to ourselves um this is this is um we're, we're, we're stuck and we can't get out of the we can't change our power i don't know i don't want to say paradigm shift but if we can have the belief and and a, and a goal that we want to achieve and we break it down into our niche like you've got your massive niche which is mother ocean and you've got your music and and there there are some activists like see like you and hopefully me most of the time 
And we just got that, whatever it is, a, a formula where we're just like, we, we might have down days, but we're so motivated and passionate that um, we'll just keep going. And there are a lot of people that I see, they're, they're depressed. It's the, it's the belief and the energy and something to get out of that state. And you turn, you probably heard this phrase as well, you turn the pain into power. And it's about a belief that we have the power because we are, whether everyone likes this or not, we're the, we're the good guys. Um, and that's also one of the reasons that we're vilified. Um, so we, we can um, reclaim the power, take back the power, but it's, it's increasing our network within activism like this um, so that we are just just build just build our power build our connections until i don't know something one day there will be what i'm going to call uh, a seismic shift where i've seen with the example of the extinction symbol it was a nothing no one knew what it was and then suddenly it became a global symbol and that's what i always remember is something um where we can see um a, a suddenly a shift yeah, I, uh, I get what you were, were talking about there with the extinction symbol and yeah, that, that has become like something that people recognize now, which is great. And you mentioned yeah. the fact that, you know, we can get vilified and I'm thinking about Greta Thunberg because yeah. she, she is often getting vilified, you know, it's yeah. like whenever she says something or appears anywhere or whatever, there's a whole load of attacks online against her. Yeah. But, I mean, I personally really admire her and I think that it was just amazing that basically that she went from just being a girl on her own trying to do something to having like world headlines and like international, you know, people all around the world knowing who she was and inspiring like thousands of young people to come forward. So mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. But um, I guess she's got used to being vilified because there's so many attacks on her all the time. Yeah. And, what you said, which I agree with you, is that, you know, we are the good guys because we're, we're trying to do something about saving all of this, which is our home, our mother, however you want to see it. Yeah. And we are actually be attacked for doing that, which is crazy. But, you know, we it live in a crazy, crazy system. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, the, the next thing I'd like, like to ask you, I think, basically is... Um, about your own career in music because we're both in, in the same business here and it's difficult you know i mean i i, I know, i'm sure you'd agree with me it's difficult yeah. um what are some of the successes that you've had with your own music uh, have you got any particular highlights that you'd like to share um i mean i i'll, I'll just i'm just getting like an flashbacks of a job interview or something where it's like highlight stages in your career um i mean i i feel like my career is still ahead of me um i'm i've always been really interested in the future um and i'm i'm just kind of obsessive about all pop music and I think music and pop music and my music and Ecotronica and music to save the world, that is, it is just a few steps ahead of us. That's how I like to think of it. So I just think all of it, my, my music that I've done in the past, it's been, you know, it has been hard work because you do it for, for, for no money, which people don't realize having a conversation with, with someone I knew recently, they, they don't realize you don't get money from the, the spot of, from Spotify, from YouTube. <clears throat> um you know some people earn money so but that's that's a whole different conversation so you do it for the love um but i do think that activists and musical activists um should get paid and i i i think that my i hope my successes are my big success, successes are still ahead of me because um things have been unbelievably difficult in so many ways and i feel like i don't know look you hear people saying this but now i feel like i'm maybe finally getting to somewhere where i can just i know what i'm doing a bit more 
<laughs> so I'm hoping my next album, all my other stuff, is just kind of stuff. Whereas my next album, um, I want it to be more. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, <sighs> I don't know, all, all the words I want it to be representative of who I am, how my, my my talents at the moment, which, you know, I'm still learning and growing as a songwriter and a musician and networking with, with other people, um, lyrically kind of conveying the message, you know, being sort of a punk attitude, but not, but punk's been done. So it's, you know, how to, make people feel uncomfortable but not so uncomfortable that they that they don't like it but they're curious um that kind of um sort of knife edge if you like um and then i in, in my plans i've got two more albums after that and i might do remixes or acoustic so um my my highlight what i'm trying to do what i want to do is um uh, it is to get my song Elon to be a number one record in the same way that um, it came on the radio. Joe McEldry was beaten off the top slot by the Rage Against the Machine track. Um, was it Killing in the Name? Um, that that is is the the single most important musical activism that has ever taken place that I can remember. Probably lots of other stuff happened. Um, maybe in the 60s or something, I don't know, I can't remember, I mean, I wasn't around. Um, but yeah, I would love, I would love getting a, getting an impactful song in the charts to be a form of activism. And I think people are missing a trick by not doing that. Uh, thank you for explaining all of that. And I share that with you. I, you know, I would like to get a, a song of mine, like in the charts and get it out. Yeah. There. And also, this was great, because you mentioned Elon, and I was going to ask you about Elon, because yeah. I know that we actually disagree about him, I think. But I, I'm an Elon supporter. And oh, okay. The other way, but, um, perhaps you could say, because Elon, as I'm sure you, you know, is like in the news right now about Twitter and about, you know, the poll that he ran and, you know, is he yeah. going to stand all this stuff? Yeah. So he's yeah. always in the news. But, um, you know, what is it that you actually really disagree with about Elon? Like, what, why are you like not an Elon supporter, whereas I am? A, I, I am an Elon supporter. Um. Um. Well, I, I firstly, just to put it simply, before you can create a colony on Mars, would you not focus on protecting the planet that you? actually live on okay, I, get, I get it like that we should look after our home planet before we're going to any other planet yeah yeah I understand that completely and I my take on it and why I would why I support him is I think that he's looking at if if all the life here is destroyed if he's yeah. got some life on Mars it's basically a safeguard it, it's not yeah I think that's part of his idea yeah and, uh, I think he makes a good point on that, really. You know, mm -hmm. he's talking about like if an asteroid crashes into the Earth, which, you know, they say that's what happened with the dinosaurs, that's the end of, of life as we know it. So whereas if you've got some life on Mars, then at least some of us would survive. And, you know, yeah. that was part of the idea. But, yeah, no, I, I take your point that we should be yeah. looking at our home planet. Uh, yeah, the, the couple of other things about that. Um, I read his um, biography, and he—I I don't think that he mentions species loss or ecosystems at all. I—I I don't really think he thinks in that way. And also, he—I don't mind him saying, "I'm we're I'm going to go and colonize Mars. That's my goal." But he's saying that, but at the same time, he's trying to say that he's saving earth by uh, saving planet earth with um and then he's exploiting i think it's the lithium mines um yeah i get that yeah sure um yeah. and he's also obviously a, um a, you know a, he's the richest person on the planet so i feel like his self marketing um really exploits 
the um the angle of i'm i'm just i'm just a humble person the richest person in the world saving all of us um i know it, it, you could say oh well he can't do everything but if i saw him in the in the amazon lying in front of a logger uh, uh you know a logging machine you, once I, I i don't probably wouldn't even be swayed if he actually did something um in the amazon if he actually did something in the ocean um just just for a bit can you take maybe some time out from from the rockets which use immense amounts of fuel um i don't re either he i feel like he either doesn't understand the ecosystems or he's just really playing that that thing because he he is a great self marketer and self promoter okay well uh, there's good points that you've made there and uh, i think basically that we're going to I, I know you know the show you know we don't we don't run this show too long because the more you talk the more you're going to lose people so uh, we're going to have to wrap up soon and i i just like to thank you very much happy for for coming on and being my guest tonight and and, and talking about these things um have you got anything that you'd like to you know leave listeners with and also how can we get in touch with you like if anybody wants to find out about your music uh what's the best way um well it's happy and the lost species which is h-a-p-i and the lost species being um species that have become extinct um just put that into google and on on the um or on all the platforms and um something to leave people with um i think we're just going through a um an interesting time in in the evolution of humanity and i i do hope that we come through the other side um i just hope we come through the other side <laughs> I, I hope that we um, i hope that there is there is a there, there is a tiny tight there is a, a very small slither of chance that uh, that we some of us can just spark some kind of change in in consciousness um which is what it is really um, a, a consciousness and understanding of changing the way we live so that we don't use up 1.75 planets and we go back to using 0.9 planets are you still there i'm still here and oh, I... my, my screen's gone yeah so we go so we degrow from 1.75 to 0.9 planets that's my final thing yeah thank you again happy and it's been great to have you on the show tonight yeah thank you thank you steve we're really living in a sci-fi world now And if you want to make the world a better place You'll know it's not just about the human race And if we were clever, we would know Elon has to go, Elon has to go
your glory It's all about your story Where are you when the forest burns? Where are you when the plastic chokes? Where are you in this concrete jungle? Checking out your bunker Are you checking out your bunker? Stop the rockets